BMW has taken the plunge into the hybrid sector with this, the Active Hybrid 5, a petrol electric 5 series saloon that at first glance looks a very tempting executive segment choice. Using the turbocharged 3 litre straight 6 from the 535i, it adds an electric motor to up the power to 325 PS and offers driving dynamics of a kind no other brand has yet managed with a hybrid. Sounds great on paper then, but hefty pricing and strong internal competition from BMW's excellent diesel 5 series models mean that the active hybrid 5 will be restricted to the tiniest of niches. At present, you probably don't associate BMW with hybrid power, but in the future, the Bavarian brand is determined that you should. A commitment that for UK buyers started here, with this car, the Active Hybrid 5. This isn't BMW's first petrol electric model. A few years ago, US and European customers got less sophisticated Active Hybrid 7 and X6 Active Hybrid models, respectively based on the 7 Series Saloon and the X6 Sporting SUV. Now, BMW didn't think there was a UK market for those, but with uh, Mercedes and Audi both entering the executive segment with hybrids of their own, the plunge needed to be taken. And if it was going to be, BMW wanted their offering to be state-of-the-art. Hitching their inline six-cylinder petrol engine and their segment-leading eight-speed auto gearbox to hybrid technology for the first time in the way that they have done with this active hybrid 5 seemed like a good place to start from. And it's part of an ongoing re-education process that BMW is embarking upon in the executive hybrid sector. People, it points out, tend to think of cars of this kind as quiet, eco-friendly and rather dull. They certainly aren't driving machines, but BMW doesn't see any reason why they can't be and has wheeled out this car as proof that green motoring can also be red misted too. Let's try it. For the most part, this 5 Series feels anything but the typical hybrid. Fire it up as you would something more conventional, and apart from being very quiet, it just feels reassuringly normal. But with an absolute bucket load of pulling power. In other words, if you didn't know this was a hybrid, then you might not even guess. Well, not unless you had the hybrid system indicator showing on the dash anyway. Keep an eye on this and you'll be able to put BMW's claim to the test that this car will be able to run in electric only mode for up to 2.4 miles and up to a speed of 37 miles an hour. Now, to be honest, I haven't managed anything like that in my time with this car, as you have to be incredibly gentle with the throttle if the petrol engine is not to thrum almost imperceptibly into life show the car a hill and the engine will also cut in. And unlike some hybrids, there's no EV button that enables you to select an electric only mode that'll force the car to stay on electric power until the batteries deplete. The thing that's easy to forget when discussing hybrid cars is that while we tend to focus on the electric part of the equation, the petrol engine is still the thing that's doing 90% of the legwork. Aware of this, uh, sly manufacturers have often in the past foisted on us petrol engines that are cheap and rather nasty in the hope that buyers will be so wowed by the electric technology they won't notice. Well, BMW doesn't work like that and the unit that's uh, provided here is much the same turbocharged 3 litre that you'll find in a conventional 535i. This straight six develops 301 PS and 400 newton meters of torque, um, and it's monopolized its class in recent years in the Engine of the Year awards ceremonies. So it's certainly a power plant from the top drawer. 
even without any electrical help in a conventional 535i. This is an engine that will send a 5 series to 62 miles an hour from rest in just 5.9 seconds on the way to an artificially limited top speed of 155 miles an hour. So it might seem a little surprising that those are the exact same figures you'll get from this active hybrid 5, despite the addition of electric propulsion improving its power output to 335 PS and its torque to 450 Newton meters. Now, part of that is explained by the fact that the hybrid gubbins add over 150 kilograms to the curb weight, uh, boosting the total weight of this car, the curb weight, to 1.85 tons. Never mind, this is still a very, very fast four-door. Indeed, it's a measure of just how muscular this power plant makes this active hybrid 5 that it's in gear 30 to 70 miles an hour acceleration and quarter mile acceleration figures have been measured at the same as those of BMW's 4.9 litre M5 V8. But there's more to a fast uh, saloon than simply sheer power and speed. After all, a rival Lexus GS 450H is a pretty fast thing but you certainly wouldn't choose one merely for the joy of hurling it around on your favourite twisting back road. Here, it's different. There's a quality to the damping of this 5 Series that just shines through. Couple that with excellent steering and you have a car that feels quite at home on British roads, especially if you resist the temptation to equip it with larger alloy wheels that will in any case drive up your running costs. The other thing that sets this 5 Series apart from Lexus hybrids you may have tried is that it has a proper automatic gearbox with proper gears rather than a belt driven CVT unit that winds its way through the rev ratios and hates to be hurried. In fact, the 40 kilowatt electric motor, it's BMW's own, is actually built into the 8 speed transmission, a unit toughened up here to handle the extra torque and designed specifically to work with BMW's clever drive performance control system uh, that uh, operates in parallel with the hybrid system. Drive performance control has four modes that you select via this rocker switch just uh, to the right of the gear stick. Comfort uh, eases the weight from the steering and optimizes the throttle and the gear shift settings for a more laid back approach to motoring. Uh, Eco Pro works in pretty much the same way, but focuses all of the car's systems on frugal progress. When the road opens up though, you might prefer to select uh, one of the uh, more uh, sporty settings. Sport will focus the gear shift and the throttle response on uh, really throwing the car forward and will put a bit more heft into the steering as you turn into a corner. And Sport Plus does the same thing, really focusing everything that the electrical and uh, petrol powered systems have to offer in terms of performance without being too track day extreme. There's also the option of a variable damper control system that uh, does pretty much the same thing but gives you uh, either comfort or sportier modes on the suspension to adjust it for the mood that you're in or the roads that you're on. And it works through the same settings on the drive performance control setup. Get used to all these systems and you'll get yourself a really rewarding executive saloon. For me, it's the weighting of the controls that differentiates a great executive car like this from merely a good one. And, and though BMW doesn't get this right all the time, the Bavarians have judged things perfectly here. The driving position's great, the seats, though a bit firm, are otherwise very supportive, and the pedals are perfectly aligned. The ultimate driving machine? Well, it's certainly the ultimate hybrid. From the outside, the Active Hybrid 5 looks like any other 5 Series model, apart from these rather prominent badges on the rear seat pillars. Other than that, take a look at this car and tell me what's not to like. Some have muttered that this post-2010 F10 Series uh, 5 model is a little low-key, but that probably comes from comparisons with the uh, Marmite, love it or hate it styling of its uh, predecessor, the E60, a car that wasn't originally well received, but which nowadays many people seem to think is rather smart. 
this F10 5 Series model has attracted no such aesthetic controversy, mainly due to the fact that there's a fundamental rightness to its shape, a, a basic athleticism that works right from the most affordable diesel model up to the frankly terrifying M5 Super Saloon. This active Hybrid 5 variant gets matte chromed exhaust pipes and a signature blue water paint finish. You remember I said that it's hard to tell that this is a hybrid? Well, that's only true up to a point, and that point usually comes when you open the boot for the first time. That's when you discover that the 1.3 kWh lithium ion battery pack, which has to go somewhere, uh, sits just above the multi-link rear axle, cutting boot space down from an almost excessive 520 litres, that's what you get in a normal 5 series saloon, to a much more modest 375 litres here, which is less in fact than BMW's 3 series saloon from the next class down. True, that's still a reasonable size, but the huge reduction in space is certainly something to bear in mind if you're drawn to a 5 Series on account of its big boot. The sighting of the battery pack is also the reason why you'll wait in vain for an Estate or a 5-door GT version of this model. Now, the issue is further compounded by the fact that the uh, rear seats don't fold down either as they normally would in a conventional 5 Series saloon. Uh, so if you're a skier, the planks will have to go on the roof. Talking of rear seats, they're as comfortable here as in any other 5 Series variant. But as with all rear-driven BMWs, the high transmission tunnel means that you won't want to be consigned to a position in the middle. At the wheel, it's just as well finished as you'd expect. There's a small gauge beneath the rev counter that shows battery charge and a uh, hybrid logo on the flap that disguises the twin cup holders in front of the gear stick. But aside from that, it's pure 5 Series fare. If that's rather underselling things in your opinion, you can switch the infotainment central display to one that shows you whether the electrical propulsion system is uh, charging, discharging or inactive at any given time. Otherwise, the architecture of the cabin throws up few surprises, with most of the switch gear being recognisable from other models across the BMW lineup. The minimalist design is appealing, and most of the major functions have a knob or a button, with only the more fanciful stuff being accessed through the iDrive infotainment system. To the right of the steering wheel, you've got a bank of um, buttons that control major safety features like the uh, automatic cruise control system that keeps you a safe distance from the car in front on the highway, as well as uh, optional safety features like the forward collision alert system that uh, uses a radar mounted above the uh, rear view mirror here to scan the road ahead and a blind spot information system that stops you dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another driver. The Active Hybrid 5 was launched only as a saloon, but there is a choice of trim levels, which means that prices start from around £47,000 and range to just over £50,000. So how does that stack up against a hybrid competition in the full-sized executive saloon sector, where cars like the BMW 5 Series, the Mercedes E-Class and the Audi A6 reign supreme? Well, at first glance, you might expect this BMW petrol hybrid to face quite a lot of competition. After all, the Mercedes E300 Bluetech hybrid is an obvious alternative. Then there's the fact that Audi has developed a hybrid version of its A6. And of course, Lexus has long campaigned in this particular market niche with its uh, GS450H. In actual fact, though, I'd still suggest this active hybrid 5 to be very much in a class of one. After all, the uh, Mercedes alternative, the E300 Bluetech Hybrid, is a, a, a diesel uh, petrol-electric model, and that makes it significantly slower. The other two choices are petrol hybrids, but for various reasons, they're not really on the same page as this BMW. Take the Audi. That's uh, a hybrid developed around a two-litre four-cylinder power plant rather than the three-litre six that you've got here. And the Lexus, well, that's nothing like as good to drive. 
But that's before someone points out to you that for around £2,500 less than the least expensive Active Hybrid 5, you could have had a BMW 535D diesel, a car that's more powerful, uh, has more torque, uh, is uh, quicker, both in terms of acceleration and top speed, uh, is far more economical and offers lower emissions. And that for around £6,000 less than this Active Hybrid 5, you could have had a BMW 535i with a conventional version of exactly the same engine, just lacking uh, the electrical assistance. So why would you buy this car? To make a, an eco-minded boardroom statement? Because you want to run your car on cheaper green pump fuel? Because you don't like these smoky NOx emissions common to diesel engines? Or because you simply want the most sophisticated, cleverest 5 Series model you can buy? All are possible reasons. At least if you do decide to go this route, you'll be rewarded with a very strong level of standard equipment, including the 8-speed automatic gearbox and a BMW navigation system designed specifically to work with the hybrid powertrain. As for the rest of the standard tally, well, I was a little surprised to find power folding mirrors and a DAB digital radio on the options list, but otherwise it's pretty comprehensive running to smart alloy wheels, rear parking sensors, chrome-tipped exhaust pipes, uh, leather trim, uh, heated and part electric seats, cruise control, Bluetooth compatibility for your phone, a decent quality six-speaker USB compatible stereo system that you access via BMW's clever iDrive infotainment system with its 10.2-inch color screen. Then you've got a keyless start, a leather trimmed multifunction steering wheel, an auto dimming rear view mirror and hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Safety kit runs to six airbags, Isofix child seat fastenings, a tyre puncher warning system and the usual electronic assistance for traction braking and stability control. Plus, there's a clever brake drying system to keep the discs at optimum working condition in wet weather. Uh, safety options include adaptive headlamps that you can also specify with a high beam assist that will automatically dip the headlamps in the face of oncoming traffic at night. On paper, your company accountant should approve. After all, this Active Hybrid 5 offers pretty much the same performance as a conventional 535i, yet with fuel consumption and CO2 emissions 16% lower, sits six bands lower in the benefit-in-kind company car tax scale. But that's not quite the whole picture. BMW quotes a combined cycle fuel economy figure of 44.6 miles to the gallon which on the face of it is amazing for a vehicle with the potent performance of this active hybrid 5. Uh, the quoted urban cycle figure is even higher, 49.6 miles to the gallon. Achieving those kinds of statistics on a regular day-to-day -day basis will of course be a different thing entirely. The rated CO2 emissions figure is 149 grams per kilometre, which again is incredibly low for a vehicle of this size, weight and performance, though it does rise to 163 grams per kilometre if you specify your car with 18-inch alloy wheels. If you want a comparison, a uh, conventional 535i petrol auto manages 37.2 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and puts out 177 grams per kilometre of CO2. A diesel 535d auto, meanwhile, manages 52.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 142 grams per kilometre of CO2. But no matter what your benchmark, you can't deny that this Active Hybrid 5 returns a pretty impressive set of statistics for a car this heavy and fast. That's as long as you uh, select the Eco Pro mode on the drive performance control system in order to achieve them. Now, if you do select that particular setting, then uh, the car will automatically um, switch into a coasting function at speeds of up to 100 miles an hour, where the petrol engine is decoupled and the vehicle is simply nudged along by the electric motor. I'm not quite sure how effective this is at uh, cutting fuel consumption, but it 
does feel decidedly odd to be travelling along at 70 miles an hour with zero revs on the clock. A bigger aid to running cost reduction is the way that the lithium-ion batteries are charged whenever the car brakes, with the electric motor performing the role of generator. And whenever you stop at the lights or you're stuck in urban traffic, there's an auto start-stop system to cut in and cut the engine. As you drive, it's easy to see what's being powered by or driven by what if you switch the central display to an energy flow diagram. It's a display that can also show you your recent frugality figures, readings that might come as something of a shock if you've got too carried away by the driving dynamics. Insurance isn't quite so clever, with a Group 43 rating putting this car a couple of groups higher than a 535i. Residual values stand at 35.5% after the standard three-year 36,000 mile term. That compares to 38.2% that you get from a comparable 535D. Mind you, the diesel option would incur the usual 3% surcharge in company car tax, common to all vehicles fueling from the black pump. It swings and roundabouts, you see. If you're looking for hybrid power in an executive saloon, but you still prioritise driving enjoyment, then you want one of these. It's faster and more dynamic than hybrid versions of sector rivals like Mercedes E-Class and Audi's A6, and a vastly more interesting thing to drive than an equivalent Lexus GS450h. True, customers who prioritise hybrid power don't tend to prioritise rewarding handling, but at least this car proves that these two things can actually come together quite beautifully. In other words, BMW's Active Hybrid 5 is a great technological achievement. A car that treads lightly in its application of hybrid technology, yet appears to yield real results. Drive one and there's the potential to enjoy yourself hugely. Enough even to almost make you want to forget the major caveat. Namely, the fact that the alternative 5 Series diesel model is cheaper and more frugal and the fact that you'd have to cover a pretty high mileage before even financially justifying this car over its conventional petrol counterpart. It all points to the truth of the matter, that BMW didn't build this hybrid model for Europeans who'd struggle to justify it, but for US and Chinese buyers not so enamoured with the alternative prospect of diesel power. People of that sort on these shores are rare indeed, but if you're one of them, then here's a rare choice to match.